What the heck is a solid shell snare drum and why are they so expensive? Welcome back to another episode of the Drum Bingus Brigade Parade. I don't know what it means. You can figure it out. So today we're going to talk about the solid shell snare drum. What is a solid shell snare drum? Most drum kits today and snare drums that are made out of wood are made out of plywood. So they take real, real thin pieces of wood that are flimsy and flexible. You glue them, put a bunch of glue on them, throw them in a mold, let it set and harden, and then you have a drum shell. Well, the difference between solid shell and plied is that with the solid shell, instead of having a bunch of little plies, you have one thick boy. A real thick boy. This here is a Slingerland Radio King, which is really the most famous example of a solid shell snare drum. And these were made starting in, uh, I believe, the 30s, 36, 37-ish. They're wonderful sounding drums. What's so interesting, I think, and what makes these more collectible solid shell, vintage solid shell snare drums over plied uh, drums of the past is that where a plied drum shell, you're going to have some variance in the way that one drum sounds to another. Because it's made of thin plies of wood, there's less variance overall. Think about metal drums. Most uh, Ludwig Superphonics, any steel, aluminum, brass drum, from one to another, the same model should sound pretty similar. Some have variances, but they're basically the same thing. Whereas with a piece of wood, it, each one could come from a different tree, a different part of a tree, a different forest. And so every single one is an individual. Every single drum has a unique, un, unique, it has a unique tone to it. I have, I've had, I've been very lucky. I've been able to have about, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 of these over my life. But this one is by far my favorite. So what you're looking at here, uh, is a drum that sat in the back of a local music shop for many, many years after a friend of mine, Mike Smith, finished it. Uh, Mike was a very close friend, and I bought this back for him to have for as long as he lived because I really want, he, he had told me he wanted this drum back for so long, and I got it. I was able to, to make a deal and get him this drum, so he held on to that. Uh, Mike unfortunately passed away last year, and uh, he gave me a bunch of his other drums, and I got to take this one home, and it's just a really, really special drum to me. What's also special beyond the shell itself here is he, he refinished this. My buddy Mike refinished this, and so there's no wrap on it, which makes it even more resonant than if it would have a wrap on it. Now, you might ask, why is that? Well, a wrap is a piece of plastic, a piece of vinyl, which basically acts like one big gasket around the drum shell. So without it, that these green Ludwig drums are paint. So there's no wrap on here. Obviously, there's no wrap. So without having that wrap on there, those drums are going to be able to sing a little bit differently. Doesn't mean better or worse. It just means they're going to, in my opinion, resonate more openly than they would if they had that giant gasket of a wrap around them. So I'm going to play through a few examples of these different drums today. Uh, again, the first one I have here, this is a 14 by 7 Radio King. Uh, let me grab a couple other ones. We'll take a peek. Got a 14 by 5 or 5 and a half uh, Radio King again here. But what's really cool about this one is, I don't know any history on this drum. I bought this one used. Someone put, I can't tell if it's Japanese rap or American rap, but this red sparkle on here is, is very old, but I can't tell where it came from. I want to say it is, it is Slingerland rap from the 30s or 40s or maybe 50s. And then... They put a reproduction three-point strainer on the front with the butt plate there. And uh, these are made by Gibraltar. Reproduction lugs, which look like the old ones on that natural finish drum I have, but they are brand new. And then they took these sort of pseudo stick saver, die casty type of hoop, put them on top and bottom. What's interesting here, I think those are from a Japanese drum. So uh, this drum has all sorts of different kooky parts on it, but you know what? It makes a really, really great tone. A uh, little snappier than the 7. Uh, more Motowny. So you'll get to hear that one too. Now 
Now, this one is the granddaddy of them all. This is an old boy. This is a 1936 Leedy solid shell. I love these because the old Leedys, they actually put a, a date code in here. So it was the, the last two digits of the year. So 36 and then 11 for November. A wonderful, cool little drum here. And I had it refinished in a wrap. I bought it with the wrap on it. But again, it seemed to muffle the drum. Heads didn't sit right on this thing. So I brought it to Milwaukee Drum Co., my buddy Derek, who does all the work on all my drums. He's a good dude. Derek, I just told him, have fun with it. Figure, you know, just take the wrap off and do something with the finish. The other thing that's a pain in the butt with Leedy's is that Leedy's uh, thread count on their tension rods is different. The thread is different. I didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> so I had Derek, I told Derek, dude, just put some some sort of lug on there that I can use normal tension rods with. And then we just put 2.3 millimeter chrome hoops top and bottom to just, again, make it easier to use, cheaper to fix, that sort of thing over time. Turned out pretty cool. It's got this sort of like barn burst uh, from sort of a black to a goldish hue at the top. And uh, 14, it's a 14 by seven, but it's a, it feels a little taller than a seven to me. It feels taller than the Radio King seven. So this one has a really unique tone. Uh, I put the Evans heavyweight head on the top here, which sort of dampens some of the high end, but I, I think it's a really usable tone and it'd be great on a pop or a country or a rock record. I mean, you really do a lot with this. Pure sound wires on the bottom. I, I love these pure sounds. I have the custom pro 20 strand brass wires on here. I like these and the other wires I like uh, that you'll see on a lot of my snare drums are the equalizer, which is six, 16 strands, eight on kind of each side, right wires. You know, I think people overlook snare wires a lot, but really it does change the whole characteristic of a drum the same way a head does. So something to putz around with. All right, now listen to these drums. Let me know what you think, and uh, we'll talk more after this musical break. <laughs> well, they sound like snare drums. <laughs> I think they're cool. Now, you know, my favorite types of snares are, are metal. I'll say that right now. Metal resonates in such a way, has a, a bite in a certain way that just comes through really nicely under microphones. But solid sh shell drums hold such a special place in my heart because it, it holds a special place in vintage drum history. I love vintage drums and this is really, this is the heart of it. This is what Gene Krupa used to these. You know, and uh, Gene Krupa literally invented the modern drum set. So you can't get more classic than that. What's cool is that even though these drums are nearing 100 years old, you can still get tones out of them that sound great on a record here in the 21st century. And hopefully in another 100 years when it's like Star Wars and we got Ewoks coming around, we're going to have Ewok rock bands. That's what I'm looking forward to in 100 years. And those Ewok rock bands can use a 200-year-old drum then and hopefully create some percussive sounds that are just as uh, modern and just as, as popular in they, their day as they have been in this day and they had been in uh, 100 years prior to my life and times. So, <laughs> so let's hear this now. I'm going to play some different examples of these in musical context. Solid shell snare drums. 
listen, sometimes they're expensive. They'll sell for up to 2,000 bucks. Craviato makes them uh, today brand new. Uh, there's a great little independent builder in Ohio called Summit Trums, and that guy builds them brand new. And uh, Doc Sweeney, they make some really great solid shell stuff too. And, and if you want to go, you know, vintage, this one I picked up for like 150 bucks because it's just such a Frankenstein of a drum. Still has that so solid shell that some people are paying a thousand bucks for, two thousand bucks for. So these deals are out there. You can find them. I totally recommend going out. Find yourself a solid shell drum that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Fix it up, whether that means ripping off. Well, now listen, if it's a nice drum, don't rip off the wrap. But if you got a Frankenstein type of drum that you got to make, take that shell, rip off the wrap, put some new lugs on, put some new hoops on. Have fun with it. Make it yours and really dig into what you can do with that drum because I think you'll be surprised. All right, well, thank you for joining me today on the Percussion Drum Brigade of Boys. Come back next time for Boys with Their Drum Toys. I don't know what this is, guys. <laughs> See you later.